While the effects of the coronavirus have been dominating most of the aviation news recently, something pretty terrifying happened at 39,000 feet in the skies over the Nevada desert. Something that could have been a repeat of a tragedy from over 30 years ago in the skies above Hawaii. The story, next on Maximus. I'll tell you what happened 32 years ago later, but first, our story. The FAA launched an investigation into the cause of a crack that developed in the fuselage of a Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 mid-flight on March 9th. The crack led to a gradual loss of cabin pressure and forced the pilots to make an emergency descent. The Southwest 737 was en route from Las Vegas, Nevada to Boise, Idaho, when the crew detected a loss of cabin pressure. According to reports by ABC News, the crew began a rapid descent from 39,000 feet to 22,000 feet in the space of six minutes when their air pressure drop was first detected. After the aircraft had completed its descent to 22,000 feet, the cabin pressure issue was resolved, allowing the aircraft to continue on its flight to Boise without further incident. No passengers or crews sustained any injuries, according to Southwest Airlines. The aircraft did not incur a rapid depressurization, masks were not deployed, so the aircraft did not require a diversion to maintain the safety of the flight. The aircraft was immediately removed from service and inspected at a maintenance facility in Boise. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, a 12-inch crack was discovered in the skin of the aircraft just behind the cockpit. Southwest Airlines says the plane is currently being repaired. At the moment, the exact cause of the crack isn't clear. However, there are a couple of obvious possibilities that the FAA is considering as part of its investigation. If the aircraft's exterior skin was not inspected within the 1500 flight guidelines, the crack may have escaped detection and developed to the extent seen in Monday's decompression. A second and less likely possibility is that the crack is a result of a manufacturing flaw. Either way, the crack could have caused a much more serious incident if it were any larger. A rapid decompression could easily have ended in catastrophe, which is why the FAA is eager to get to the bottom of the incident. Monday's incident isn't the first time Southwest has experienced issues with fuselage skin on its aircraft. In fact, there have been two other similar incidents in recent years that have brought Southwest Airlines under scrutiny for its maintenance procedures. In 2011, a Southwest Airlines Boeing 737 experienced a particularly concerning incident when a five-foot hole opened up mid-flight. This incident was also attributed to cracks in the aircraft's fuselage skin, similar to those discovered in the aircraft involved in Monday's incident. However, the 2011 incident was much more serious, forcing the aircraft to make an emergency landing rather than just descending to a lower altitude. Depending on the outcome of its investigation, the FAA may recommend that the inspection schedule guidelines for fuselage cracks on the Boeing 737 be reduced to fewer than 1,500 flights. Any size tear in the aluminum skin of a commercial aircraft at 39,000 feet sounds scary enough. But when you find out this was a foot-long rip in the fuselage, it gets real. So what would happen if a plane had a crack so large that the airplane actually tore open mid-flight? Well, we don't have to wonder. In fact, some of you may even remember in 1988, an Aloha Airlines Boeing 737 had just that same exact scenario play out. As a matter of fact, the pilot of that plane did something even Captain Sully didn't do. It was April 28, 1988. A beautiful day in Hawaii as always. Aloha Airlines Flight 243, a Boeing 737-2, with a crew of five and 89 passengers on board. The captain was Robert L. Shortensteimer, a seasoned pilot with 8,500 flight hours, of which 6,700 hours were in the Boeing 737. First Officer Madeline Lynn Tompkins she had flown 8,000 hours with 3,500 in the B-737. Plus, a Federal Aviation Administration air traffic controller was on the flight deck as an observer. As soon as the plane leveled out at 24,000 feet, one-third of the roof of the plane was ripped completely off, immediately sucking out Chief Flight Attendant Clarabelle Ho Lansing, who had been standing in the aisle at row five, they searched the ocean 24,000 feet below for her body for days. They never found her. 
Flight attendant Jane Sato Tomita sustained serious head injuries and was unconscious. Flight attendant Michelle Honda and many passengers were also injured by flying debris and the effects of the decompression. The flight deck door flew away, Captain Shortensteimer said. I could see blue sky where the first class ceiling used to be. The captain took control and began a rapid descent at 334 miles an hour with a staggering rate of 4,100 feet per minute. He pointed his plane towards the nearest airport, Kahalui Airport on the island of Maui. First Officer Tompkins handled all the communications and of course assisted the captain handling the nearly uncontrollable aircraft. Shortensteimer described the flight controls as loose and sluggish. Descending through 10,000 feet, he began to slow the airliner. But below 196 miles per hour, it became less controllable, so he maintained that speed for the approach to the runway. At the normal point in the approach, the crew lowered the landing gear, but the green light for the nose gear did not illuminate. The manual system was activated. Hello, 243, can you give me your souls on board and your fuel on board? We, uh, 85, 86 plus 5 crew members. Roger, how many do you think are injured? We have no idea. We can't communicate with our flight attendants. Okay, we'll have ambulance on the way. Still, the green light didn't come on, but neither did the red light. Captain Shortensteimer felt that it was imperative to get the plane on the ground, so there was no time to troubleshoot the landing gear. At this time, Flight 243 began to yaw and roll. The number one engine had failed, however, both engines were damaged from ingested debris. An unsuccessful attempt was made to restart number one. The Boeing 737 landed on runway two, just over 10 minutes since the emergency began. The thrust reverser on the number two engine was used to slow the airplane. And here's where we bring this story back around to the top of this video and why that crack in the fuselage of the Las Vegas 737 last week could have been much worse. The Boeing 737 N73711 was damaged beyond repair. It was scrapped immediately after the investigation. At the time of the accident, the airframe had accumulated 35,496 hours in total airframe time with 89,680 cycles. The cause of the fuselage failure was fatigue cracking around rivets as a result of the vast number of pressurization and depressurization cycles, as well as operating in a salty coastal environment. Okay, here it comes now. Wait for it. During the NTSB investigation, a passenger reported having seen a crack in the fuselage when boarding the flight, but did not say anything about it to the crew. Captain Shortensteimer remained with Aloha Airlines until he retired in 2005. Madeline Lynn Tompkins also stayed with Aloha and rose to the rank of captain. When Aloha Airlines ceased operations in 2008, she went to Hawaiian Airlines. So the warning, if you see something, say something, doesn't always apply to terrorists. It's also a good rule of thumb when you see a giant crack in your plane to let somebody know. But hey, Southwest Airlines, if you want to make sure this doesn't happen again, Inspect your damn airplanes. Well, that's it for me. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Remember to like, share, subscribe, ring that bell. And until next time, leave the rubber on the runway and your troubles on the ground, and I will see you in the air. Yeah, this is Maximus. <laughs>